Yeah, so Biggs is just going through return to play well protocols. Um, yeah, he's um, he, he was good in the change room, so he's starting to do, do those now. Um, Finn is going to be back in training this week, and then um, Wynn Jones is, has got a minor shoulder injury, so he's probably going to be doubtful for the test match, but th th those are the only concerns we've got at the minute. Steve, what are your reflections on Saturday? Is it a stick or twist selection-wise, do you think, for the second test? Um, no, I think we'll have it. we'll have a debate tonight in our own selection. We talk through the game and probably focus more on where we can get better as a team um, going into the second test match. So we'll probably have a little bit of review. There was lots of good performances and probably lots of areas that we can improve on um, going into the, the second test. Um, but to answer your question, we'll, we'll probably debate selection a little bit more tonight. Rassi Erasmus has been making some interesting comments on Twitter about the test match. He was quite magnanimous in defeat on Saturday, but yet appears to be backing a Twitter account which has been highlighting errors in the refereeing of the match. I mean, what do you make of it? Oh, look, um, I think being a bit of a dinosaur myself, I'm not on Twitter and things. I'm just, like, I've been a lot of USA, but ultimately, look, it's, it's his viewpoint. Um, we'll just, like, with the officials, we thought we'd, they'd done a really good job in the weekend, and if there's anything we, we need to bring up, we'll just go through the appropriate channels. What kind of response, though, are you expecting from them next time? Oh, look, I think, I think I don't know whether response is the right word. I think South Africa, at the end of the day, they're world champions. Um, they put in performance after performance. You don't win World Cups um, from from not being able to um, recover from things. So we know how much of a physical team they are and how much pride they've got in their performances. But ultimately, I think it's just... But us looking at ourselves and where we can improve as well as we know South Africa are going to bring physicality. You know they're a smart rugby team, but I think for us it's just more looking at ourselves and how we can improve and, and what we can bring more to the second test match also. Just finally for me on, on Elliot Daly's performance and where you see Chris Harris right now going into the second test. What did you make of Elliot Daly on Saturday? Oh look, I think there's, there's lots of good things around Elliot. There's obviously like there's bits and pieces from everyone that, that we can tidy up and I think where, where we are as a squad at the moment, you look at Chris, you look at Bundy, you've got Faz in around the centre, so th there's, there's competition right throughout the board. Um, and again, we'll talk more selection, but I think the second half performance of the, of the group shows us where, where we can get to, and ultimately we, we'll probably speak more about that tonight. Thanks so much. No problems. Steve, if Wynn Jones isn't available for, for selection this weekend, does, does that force your hand and maybe looking to bring out a replacement? Because the initial announcement on Saturday was that at that point you didn't see the need. But if you're down to two loose heads, will you have to bring someone out? Uh, not, not this minute in time we want, no. Razzi has used the words dangerous and reckless when describing some of those tackles. Those are very emotive words, aren't they? Do, do we have to be a bit more careful? Um, look, we just got to look at ourselves and what, what we do and at the end of the day we, we've got to do our talking on the field and how we go about things and at the end of the day Rossi's comments are his own comments but I think for us it's just more focusing on what we are, what we need to tidy up and making sure that we're nice and clean and how we go about things. Just on that, as, as a sport, um, if we're going to stop and micro-analyse every single incident in a game and get a TMO involved, matches are going to be two and a half, three hours long, and there'll be plenty of complaints about that. Where is the balance? Where's the happy medium in this, do you think? Look, I think, I think that's, that's a fair point. No, we don't want the games going on forever. I think it's the major calls, like you just want to get right and, and spend probably the, the appropriate time on. But yeah, the little bits and... Again, it's hard for the, the officials. There's, there is so much going on. And again, I know like people are saying there's been Razzies coming out and saying bits and pieces around the performances on the weekend, some bits miss a detail. But every team's got those moments. Every team could go through micro details and analyse it. We do it ourselves. But I think it's then 
going through the appropriate channels, raising the ones that are relevant and not making it about every small detail. It's just making sure those big key moments are the ones that are correct. Half the battle during the game is picking up on the nuances of how the referee is calling it. How pleased were you with the way that the players reacted as they picked up that understanding and the penalty count actually ended up almost two to one in your favour? Yeah, look, I think I think at half time, I think the boys were really calm and understood it. We probably um, we give a couple of cheap penalties away in the first half that we didn't need to, and just talking about how we can be impose ourselves by being smart and around that. And I think that, like, like we said, the officials done a really good job, and then the balance of power changed in around the, the penalty come for us by do, looking after what we can look after. So that that was really pleasing for the boys how they adapted, and at the end of the day, the physical. Intense, intense test matches. The things that, like, there are, like you said, there are absolutely fine margins in, in in lots of things. But I think we definitely got that right in the second half. Thank you, Steve. No problem. Morning, Steve. Morning. Um, in many ways, will this selection for the second test um, be every bit as difficult as the, as the first one? You've got the guys who are left out, desperate to get in. The guys who have got the jerseys, obviously, are absolutely desperate to keep hold of them. Oh, definitely, and I think you, you, like as coaches, you you you've got to challenge um, the selections. I think you've got to like review the game. And in fairness to the group, like we, we talk all the time, how connected they are and how like good they are for each other. You look at Tuesday's session; what the non non starters brought to training was was outstanding. They really stressed us on both ends of the ball, which is really pleasing. You see. You listened, and I know it's probably go, going off point. But you listened to the the noise the the non starters were making um, for the boys in in an empty stadium was was terrific. It shows, I think, the bond and that connection within the team, and I think the way they perform in training, the way the boys have performed in the previous games, it does make those selections. I don't think it's it's an easy one tonight when we talk about it because you've got lots of form from the boys that that weren't involved, and also we've just won. A test match in South Africa, so it's it's something. Yeah, to answer a long-winded question, a long-winded answer is yeah, it'll be just as difficult. I think. I'd like to ask you about one individual, Ali Pricey. Probably wasn't many people's pick to be the starting line when when the squad was announced, but you know, we looked at home out there on on Saturday. Can you just describe you know the the, the tour that Ali has had and the way that he's stepped up in this in this level? Yeah, look, I think he, he's. Um, Taken to it really well. He's he's confident. Look, he's he's a great human being, and he's he's a really good pro. And I think having um, the likes of Connor and Gar around as well, you see how they, they work off each other. And I think coming on into a, a Lions trip, you see um, different skill sets and different people. And I think that's the beauty is that they connect really well, and also you you, you adapt. And I think being around the Lions, that the, the standard is absolute quality, and you pick up bits and pieces from from others, but. Ali's done done really well as 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 the other other two nine. So it's just making sure we we build on these performances. Cheers, Steve. Thank you. Hi, Steve. Gareth Griffiths here. Mate, can you hear me? All right, Gareth, how's it going? Yeah, not, not too bad, mate. Not too bad. You mentioned there, uh, Steve, earlier about sort of the Razzie things through the official channels the Lions going through. How important that is? It is that do you think for the integrity of rugby that you know it isn't sort of stuff isn't being done by trial by social media. Oh, look, I, I think for me, it's, it, look, it's a tough job, and look, I, I know everyone moans around certain decisions, and I think it's just trying to keep it. And I know there's always frustration, and we get as coaches, but I think it's if we can keep that because it is, it is a tough job out there for the officials, and if we can keep it to the proper chance, I think that's probably the best way in around that. Because, like I said, it, it's a tough job. It's tough for the players, tough for coaches, and it's definitely tough for the referees too. And just one on Alan Wynn, Steve, you've known him a very long time, just come back to play the full 80 in a test match. Um, people have obviously been saying that. What, what, um, you've known him since playing with him, but what, is, uh, what does that mean uh, for, the, for him to get through that full test match after what he's been through over the last month? Oh, look, it's, it's um, a phenomenal effort. Um, personally, it doesn't surprise me. Um, and like I think I spoke about it last week, if there was anyone to do that, it'd be someone like him. Um, you look at, like I know, and probably bore you in around what he does off the field, on the field, recovery processes. Like is, like I, like I said, I think anyone else after the Japan game would have given up. He didn't. Like he's straight on focus on how we can get back. And then obviously you have the the, the speak to other people, and then he, he builds himself up. We were watching the training he was doing um, when he was back home. It was was just a superhuman effort, and to back up eighty minutes in 
a physical test match like it was in the weekend is is a pretty special performance. Thank you very much. Good luck in the weekend. Thank you. Hi, Steve. Um, Warren's referenced a couple of times that the the team haven't conceded a pick and go try or uh, a more try on the tour so far. C can you explain how much of a point of pride that is for, for you and, and and the players? Yeah, look, it's it's, it's a massive. Um, um, like it, like the boys is massive pride in it, and I think there's that mindset. And I think not allowing Safka in on the weekend, lots of times. Like obviously the last set they got into a 22, which the boys done really well. But it's been good. That, like we've been tested around there, um, so it's been really good to see how we've the attitude and appetite we've brought in around those areas. And I'm sure we're gonna have to dig deep at some point over the next two games in around that goal line defence, mall defence, the same thing because. You know how big and physical and the mall pride the Safka have in that. So we know we're going to have to continue with that sort of mantra and, and mindset in around that goal line because we know there'll be moments where we're going to have to dig deep. You see on the weekend where they did bust us a little bit on one of the malls, the, the speed the Maro gets back to turn it over. So you see the appetite and, and the desire from the boys to, to defend our line. Thanks, Steve. Sorry, can I just clarify? Um, you spoke about Finn and Dan Bigger uh, situation. Finn's back in training. Does that mean he's in contempt, or he, you know, he's, he would be available for selection this weekend? And does Dan and Dan six days from Saturday to go through the protocol? Can you just clarify that for me? Yeah, I think da Dan should be like all being well, will be available to train on Thursday with the team, and then Finn Finn is starting training with us today. Yeah, he, yeah, he could, he could potentially be in the mix. Yes, yeah, he pulls up. I know he's been reacting well to to the training. So again, we'll we'll discuss all that this evening. Thanks, Thanks, Steve, just a quick one on the scrum, if I may. I mean, the, the, to talk about a bot clash is such a, a, a cliche, but it's inevitably going to happen. Can you do much more work on your scrum this week, or or, or do you just keep it ticking over? Oh, I think we're, we're always, like, you know, Maka's reviewing stuff downstairs now this morning. There's, there's always areas for us to improve on, whether it be scrum, defence, attack. I think, like, you can't rest in your laurels, in particular with South Africa. I thought it's a good start from us. And again, we've got to keep building because we know what's coming. They really pride themselves on, on, on the set piece. And we know how strong they are. Well, I'll, you, you don't win a World Cup without having a, an unbelievable set piece with something we we need to continue to work on. And again, we love a really good training week, so we'll be able to prepare and, and, and do more work in around those areas. How much time, would you put more time than in a normal test week into this scrum this week, or can you give us some context on that, please? Yeah, no, I think it'll just be, we'll do what we feel is, is necessary. Makas is, is really smart on what he does with the units, and again, it's that balance of how much you do, and then just making sure there's, there's lots of... Um, like where we are conditioning-wise in round going into Saturday, but I don't see it being any different to any other week.